Well, most of us eat food at our homes. Most of us eat food at our homes. We sometimes visit restaurants and hotels. We eat prasadam in temples. We eat langars in gurudwaras. The students here at KLU eat food in their canteens and their mess kitchens. So every time a meal is cooked and a meal is eaten, there is generation of some amount of wastage. This wastage can be in the form of peels of fruits and vegetables coming out of the kitchen. It can be in the form of leftovers on our plates um, or anything for that matter, any kind of food that goes bad is wastage. So all this wastage finally goes into our trash cans. Now, how many of us have experienced times when this trash does not get picked up from our doorsteps. What happens if this trash is not cleared for a day or two? Well, some very obvious things happen. There's smell, ants line up. If you make it stay there a little longer, then there can be an intrusion of a rat. If you make it stay a little longer than that, then we are just inviting trouble for ourselves. But thankfully, this does not happen to most of us because trash does get cleared off on a daily basis. The municipal van does come every day and takes away this wastage. So our job is literally done. We are done disposing of the waste. But how many of us actually know or think about what happens to this wastage when it is picked up by these municipal vans. How many of us think about it? Not many. So let me quickly tell you all a little bit about the fate of this so-called waste after it is picked up by these municipal vans. Let me tell you all about the fate of this wastage that we all contribute to as a society. So the, the trash cans are picked up by the municipal vans and taken to transfer stations. At these transfer stations, they are reloaded into larger vehicles or tippers from where they are taken into landfill sites or any other waste disposal facility. So this is a tipper which is unloading waste into a landfill site. And this is what a landfill site finally looks like. Well, in very, very easy terminology, a landfill is the oldest form of waste disposal, wherein waste is just dumped in pits or buried directly in the, in the ground. So basically what we are doing is we are letting all our waste rot here instead of our homes. And the result is again very, very obvious. There's contamination of groundwater, contamination of soil, contamination of our local environment, and many, many long-term effects and diseases. These landfills, mind you, are not very far off from, from our cities, from our towns, from where we live. So I'm not saying that we can form or come to a, a conclusion or a solution which can solve this entire issue at one single go. But what we can do is we can adopt some technologies to at least mitigate this problem, to reduce some of the bad effects that these landfills are causing today. Let me take the example of the city of Vijayawada. So the central city of Vijayawada and the Mangalgiri municipality together produce approximately 600 tons of wastage per day. And this 600 tons of wastage comprises of biodegradable waste as well as inorganic waste like plastics, packaging material, construction debris, everything is just mixed together and sent to the landfills. Now, it has been found that 70% of this wastage, which is approximately 400 tons or 420 tons, is actually all biodegradable in nature. And surprisingly, 20 to 30% of this waste 
that is approximately 100 tons per day comes from some large kitchens like hotels, restaurants, institutes, temples, gated communities, vegetable market yards or our sabji mandis. And another interesting fact is that this 20 to 30 percent of biodegradable wastage that our city produces, almost the entire wastage is already segregated. This is what segregated kitchen waste looks like in a hotel or a restaurant. And this is what segregated vegetable waste looks like in a sabji mandi. So what we are essentially doing now is that we are taking this waste and mixing it with the rest of the waste and rendering it useless and letting it rot. So let me tell you all a little bit now about a technology that has emerged which can take some of the responsibility, that is, which can actually solve some of these problems right away. These technologies have, in fact, arrived in India. One such technology is called the high-rate biomethanation technology or modern biogas technology. These technologies are indigenous. They are completely made in India. They are extremely compact. They are very highly engineered and very easy to operate. This magic box that you see here, this green colored box, is so compact that it can actually fit into the parking space of just one car. So this, this particular compactness of these technologies actually make it very, very apt for the local environment which is actually crying for help. So, for example, if a technology such as this one is adopted by, let's say, a hotel, then this hotel waste need not actually go out to the municipality at all. This machine can sit in the backyard of that same hotel or the same sabji mandi or the same institute and treat the waste at source without having to travel across the city and finally landing up into a landfill site. This is called waste management at source in a distributive fashion. The next best thing about this technology is that the entire wastage which is treated in a single day at source is converted into a clean fuel. This clean fuel is called biogas. And biogas is an inflammable gas which is capable of replacing LPG. So what's typically going to happen is that this wastage, instead of going into a municipal can, will directly go into this biomethanation box. And the energy that is produced from this process of biomethanation is going to be directly pipelined back into the kitchen of this large hotel and directly replace its LPG consumption. So we are killing two birds with a single stone. Not only are we addressing the huge, massive issue of waste management, but we are also helping these large kitchens reduce their energy bills. As a byproduct of this entire process, there is generation of a liquid or solid manure that you see here up in the slide. Now this manure or fertilizer, again, can be used back by these same large kitchens in their landscape area. So all in all, this biomethanation technology has the power to create a closed loop system which will not allow the segregated waste to be thrown out in the landfill at all. It will treat this waste at source, generate the energy, and give it back to the kitchen. Let me uh, show you uh, a little slide about this biogas being used in one of the large kitchens. This is how a biogas run stove or a chula looks like. The experience of cooking on a biogas stove is very similar to cooking on an LPG run stove. The time taken for cooking is also very, very similar. And here you see the liquid bio manure being utilized in the landscape area of a certain hotel. Now, I want to back this whole thing up with a real life example. 
So there is an NGO, a midday meal NGO called the Akshay Patra Foundation, which cooks meals for 16 lakh children on a daily basis, school going children. Now their uh, foundation is spread across India in about 28 sites, 28 kitchens. And some of the largest kitchens of the Akshay Patra Foundation today are cooking over 1 lakh meal per day per site. So obviously now when a kitchen is cooking 1 lakh meals in a day, there is definitely going to be generation of some kitchen wastage. So this picture that you see up here is that of a high rate biomethanation plant which was set up at one of the kitchens of the Akshay Patra Foundation in the city of Ahmedabad. This kitchen generates approximately one ton of kitchen waste per day and this kitchen waste comprises of cooked food waste, vegetable peels, fruit peels, any kind of sweet that goes bad or anything for that matter that is rejected from their lot or stock. So this plant here in Ahmedabad is converting this entire one ton of waste in a day into biogas and this biogas is equal to five LPG cylinders. So what this large kitchen is essentially doing is that it is throwing all its waste into this machine instead of the landfill. So five LPG cylinders are being saved by just one kitchen in one day by throwing away its waste in a biomethanation box. So imagine what would happen if all Akshay Patra kitchens were to have their own biomethanation machines. Imagine what would happen if all our three star and five star hotels were to set up their own biogas plants in their own backyards. Imagine what would happen if our Sabji Mandi would have its own biogas plant. We would not just be saving so much wastage from going into the landfill, but we would be saving a lot of LPG, a lot of costs that we today incur on LPG. So if all our bulk kitchens actually come forward today to set up these technologies in their own backyards, then I'm sure that this will slowly trickle down to gated communities and even to individual homes someday. The students of KL will be happy to know that this institute is going to get its own biomethanation plant this year, which will be treating all your canteen and kitchen waste, mess waste on a daily basis to produce LPG. And the entire LPG that your current canteen is working on will be replaced by this biogas based LPG. So we cannot really stop eating food, nor can we have too much control over all this wastage that is produced on a daily basis. But what we can surely do is try to make these technologies more and more common. These technologies have come a long way already in India. They have done well, they, ha they are commercially successful. But a lot more can be done to make these technologies more sustainable and more affordable and as I just said more common. So let's just hope that the next time we eat food and throw it away, it goes into a biomethanation plant and not a landfill. Thank you.